Grace and Peace Freedom friends and family, we thank you so much for joining us on today. My God, you are in the right place on today. Listen, our Bible tells us that in Romans 1:17 that those that are justified by God through Christ Jesus shall live by faith. It then goes on to tell us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. But it then asks, how can they hear without a preacher? So listen, you're in the right place today because God has placed an anointed voice here in the earth for us to hear so we can grow our faith. So whichever platform you join us on today, be it Facebook, be it Twitter, be it Periscope, be it our website, we want to say thank you for being here today. We ask that you please like, please share, please comment. Let us know how the word of God is changing your life because we know that as this word gets into you, it's going to affect everything in you and your life will be for the better. We're now going to go to our worship and arts ministry as they prepare to give us a song of praise. And then following that, we're going to have our own Bishop Elect Hedgeman is going to preach a word from heaven so that we can now grow in our faith. I'll be right back after the word. That is my season. It's my season. Say I believe. I believe. That is my time. It's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. I can feel it. Breakthroughs in the room. Breakthroughs in the room. Come on, tell yourself. Anticipate. Anticipate. Grace and peace be unto you, to everyone who's watching us now. Why don't you go ahead, if you have not already, during praise and worship, and greet those who are joining us in this virtual space by affectionately get, extending to them grace and peace to freedom, family, and friends. I want to extend that same salutation on behalf of First Lady, myself, our executive board, and our members of Freedom Rock. We do greet you in divine love the bible says let brotherly love continue and i'm thankful that even in this virtual space even though we're not together physically we're able to show love virtually amen and we're able to agree spiritually i'm thankful today because of several things one in particular i'm thankful that our women have continued to completion almost their prayer assignment on 
the mornings at 6 a.m. And I'm thankful that they are praying in faith and agreeing. I'm so excited to be a part and have been a part of such an awesome collaborative move of God. I am thankful that even on tomorrow and Tuesday, I believe, will be the last day of the 21 days. So I encourage all of you to join in with them in prayer. Also, I want to repeat tonight uh, concerning our Christmas adoption that the Freedom Rock Kappas are, have come together and we are sponsoring a family. Now there is an application process that would need to be submitted that can be picked up in the office. We will review those applications. We will select a family and we want to help make this holiday season a memorable one for those who are less fortunate, who may have experienced hardship along the way. But your children, amen, are still dear to your heart. And we want to just help you make this moment an incredible one for them. One point of clarity, uh, we did misstate the name. Our Ministry of Care always submits to us names of members who are hospitalized. And we were praying for Ms. Courtney Emerson. I'm thankful that she's now returned home. And we were praying for uh, Ms. Louise Jones, but Ms. Jones was not sick. It was Ms. Irene Allen. And I think Miss Irene Allen came home on Monday, if I'm not mistaken. So correction, there's nothing wrong with Miss Louise Jones, praise the Lord. But Miss Irene Allen, we want to continue to keep her lifted in prayer as well. And today, uh, you're watching this, but it's recorded uh, on the day where we did our supernatural grocery with Patch. And we're so excited that many families... 12 we could not do everybody but we're keeping up with who we're able to identify in these acts of generosity on behalf of our church and we will continue to find our way until prayerfully as these opportunities present themselves we'll be able to help everyone in the end or throughout but we're thankful we were able to be a blessing with groceries amen for all the way through till the beginning of February for our senior elderly members on this week. So kudos to Freedom Rock Church, being a church that understands the importance of being influential transformers of lives as well as community. Well, let's go into the word of the Lord. I'm excited about this message. I know what God has already shared with me that he's getting ready to do. And so I understand why this series of teaching is so important. And I know what's to come to those who will not only hear, but obey and practice. Hearers and doers of the word. Let's start in Romans 5, verse number 21. So we're teaching on right believing, the solution to sin practices. Right believing, the solution to sin practices. All right? Right believing, the solution to sin practices. However, tonight's teaching is entitled, Sin versus Grace. Sin versus grace sin versus grace romans chapter 5 verse 21 we're going to read here in the message bible and the bible reads as follows: all that passing of the law against sin did was produce more lawbreakers so there was no freedom in sin the more the law was there the more sin entrapped us based upon the consequences of the law but sin didn't and doesn't presently have a chance in competition with the aggressive forgiveness we call grace. When it's sin versus grace, grace wins hands down. All sin can do is threaten us with death and that's the end of it. Grace, because God is putting everything together again through the Messiah, invites us into life, a life that goes on and on and on a world without ending. Again, the verse before that, verse 20, said that uh, when it's sin versus grace, grace wins hands down. Now, I don't believe that this statement is just being made in reference to the life of Jesus. I believe this statement is made for the life of believers who have received Jesus. So I don't believe that Jesus is separate from us when it comes to the Bible's 
promise and prediction that whenever there is sin versus grace, that grace will win hands down. I believe God wants us to release faith, to believe that even for our own selves, that when it comes to sin versus grace, even in your life, grace will win hands down. So let's, let's learn how to win the battle against sin every time through grace. What we're going to learn, we're going to learn how to win the battle against sin every time through grace. One of the things God has told us to do, he's given, he's given us a, an assignment. God said for us to increase our righteous declarations of ourselves to ourselves. So it's important that we keep declaring we're righteous when we feel like it, when we feel like it's applicable, or when we feel like it, it's not. The, the, when you hear even the voice of your leader reminding you, declare yourself righteous. When, when you're hearing that while you're driving, you may be walking uh, to your mailbox. You may be outside on your back porch. You may be uh, online shopping. You hear the Spirit of God remind you of that. Declare it. I am the righteous of God. God told us to continue to do that. Now, one of the things we gave you to help you in a righteous declaration, if you didn't have one, was, to, was, was this. I declare... I am, I declare, excuse me, I am the righteous of God and sin has no power over me. I declare I am the righteous of God and sin has no power over me. So just in case you don't have a declaration, that is one. Now, we said we're graced to live a life that's pleasing to God. Amen. We don't live pleasing to God through our flesh. We don't live pleasing to God in our own strength. We don't live pleasing to God in our own power. We need grace. And through his grace, we are able to live a life that's pleasing to God. And so this right standing, this right standing that God has given us is sustained by grace, not by works. Again, this right standing that God has given us is sustained by grace, not by works. So your works didn't earn it and your works won't keep it. Okay? Now, just in case you need scriptures to help you with that, I'm not going to turn to these for the sake of time, but you can write these down, note takers again. Romans chapter 1, verse 17, New Living Translation. Romans 1, 17, New Living says, God has made us righteous. Okay, so that's one you can have. God made you righteous, not you. Okay, I think it's Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, says that he who knew no sin became sin, that through his sin we might become the righteousness of God. So Jesus is the way and reason in which we are declared righteous. Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Amplified says, you have been declared righteous righteous so it's important that you understand there was nothing you did in works to get there and it is not your works that will keep you there however righteousness comes and, it, and there's a grace that comes upon us to help us stay in right standing now that's not necessarily works of the flesh that's obedience when I'm in right standing there's just certain things I do in right standing there's certain things we you do that we should do in right we, we forgive because I want to stay in right standing that's not a work that's that's a that's obedience okay that, that that's living out your righteousness as his right standing you know you love why because I want to remain in right standing and so we must understand grace comes upon us to help us stay in right standing. Now, grace will not make sense to you when we're talking about something that helps you stay in right standing when all you know grace to be is favor. So, not an incorrect but an incomplete understanding of grace will never translate to you living superior or above the control of intentional sin. Because if you're thinking favor, 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 you're like, well, how, how will I, why would I need to stop this intentional sin if I'm going to keep getting favor, favor, favor? God's going to still do it in spite of. God's going to still give it to me in spite of. God's going to still work it out in spite of. And really the truth of the matter is, no, he will not. Okay? And so we must understand that there are periods of time where God's through his grace, he's so good to us, he said that the goodness or the grace of the Lord would lead us to repentance. So God said, I did that for you, and I brought, I brought that to pass for you in spite of you hoping you would repent, you would turn back to me. But after a period of time, 
where we are convincing God that we have no intentions to repent, what we used to see as favor will not work in that component anymore. And so we have to understand that God has a solution for sin, all right, for intentional sin. He's, he's not trying to substitute it with favor, okay? No, no, no. God has a solution for it, and it is right believing, it's righteousness, and it is grace, okay? So right believing in righteousness allows me to understand grace in being more than just Favor. I need somebody to say to yourself, grace is more than favor. Let's look at Luke chapter 2, verse 40. Luke 2, 40. We'll go directly to the Amplified. Luke 2, verse 40. The Bible says, And the child grew and became strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom and the grace. Notice favor and spiritual blessing. Okay, you want to write down spiritual blessing if you have not. So grace is not just favor. Grace is favor and spiritual blessing. When he says spiritual blessing, what is he talking about? Real quickly, go to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 1. We'll look at it in the Amplified. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 1. So grace is not just favor. Grace is spiritual blessing. What is spiritual blessing? 2 Timothy 2 and 1 says, So you, my son, be strong, strengthen inwardly in the grace, spiritual blessing that is to be found only in Jesus Christ. So this spiritual blessing is the way in which grace strengthens us inwardly. Okay, it is not God approving things that we just didn't deserve. It is a strengthener. It is a power, praise the Lord, that gives that, that is given to us inwardly, okay? So grace is not just favor. Grace is a power that strengthens us inwardly. Now, when we are strengthened in this grace, it's starting to make sense. This strength inwardly that grace gives us is a strength that will give us the power to live above sin. Now, it doesn't mean you won't sin, because you're not perfect, but it does mean you will not be controlled by sin, all right? Why? Because this grace that's on the inside of you is giving you strength from within, praise the Lord, amen, to live superior to sin and not subject to it. Romans 6 and 14, real quickly. I love this. It's so clear. King James, Romans 6 and 14, reads as follows. Glory to God. Amen. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you're under grace. So the reason why sin can't be over you is because you're under grace. So grace can't be over you and sin be over you. So if you're under grace, sin cannot share the same position of grace. Because we just read, well, whenever it's a competition between sin and grace, grace wins hands down. So the way we said it Sunday, that I think you ought to hear it yet again, is that when grace is on top, sin is on the bottom. When you're living under grace, you're able to live above sin. Now, somebody say, wait a minute now. Wow. So, so you mean to tell me that this grace that you're teaching me that gives me strength inwardly will allow me to live superior to something that I've always done? To something that has always brought me into shame? Something that has always caused me to have a need to lie and manipulate and, 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 and practice behaviors that I had prior to Christ? You mean to tell me that grace is the solution to my intentional sin? Yes, I am. Because what this grace is going to do is this grace is going to give you authority over that sin that you do not have in your own flesh. Grace gives us authority over sin that we do not have in our own flesh. Real quickly, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 10. We'll read this um, out of the Amplified. I believe, no, 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 no. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, Amplified. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, Amplified. This grace gives you authority in the area where you did not have authority in your own flesh. Okay? in your own flesh. Look what the Bible says. But he said unto me, my grace, my favor, loving kindness and mercy, my grace that is, is enough for you. Sufficient against any danger and watch this, enables you. If you did not hear the message Sunday, then you want to write down the word enable because the word enable means to give authority. So there it is. What grace does, grace gives you authority where you did not have authority. 
So grace gives you the power to exercise control over what once controlled you. So you say, how am I going to stop lying? Grace will enable you, praise the Lord, to walk or exercise your tongue righteously instead of having a lying tongue. All right? You, you, you can't do it in your own strength because your flesh is very familiar with that. That is something that you were very well routine in. All right? It's common to your nature. But when you allow grace, praise the Lord, to empower you, grace will then give you authority to say no to that temptation to lie. Praise the Lord. Amen. He'll grace you to do it. He'll grace you to do it. Now, this is important because how do I get this grace? I'm glad you asked. Let's go to John chapter 1, verse number 12. John chapter 1, verse number 12. Praise the Lord. This is how we receive grace. So you already know I need grace for that thing. That thing is intentional in my life. Amen. I'm you should be tired of hiding it, tired of it working on your mind, tired of it robbing you of opportunities. When things don't go right or things don't come to pass, you got to wrestle with, was it because of that? Well, it's time for you to be freed from that. Praise the Lord. And God is not going to just free you so you can fall back to it. God wants to give you grace. He wants to strengthen you inwardly, praise the Lord, so that you can be on top of it. When grace is on top, sin is on the bottom. He says, watch this, but as many as received him, to them he gave power. To what? Become the sons of God. All right? Even to them that believe on his name. So I'm able to walk in sonship. I'm able to walk in the same thing that Jesus walked in in the earth. All right? All right, all I got to do is to believe him. If I believe him, he gives me the power. He gives me both ability and authority to live as Jesus lived in the earth. How does he do this? Verse 14. The Bible says, And the word was made flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as unto the only begotten of the Father. Who was the only begotten of the Father? John 3, 16 tells us that was Jesus, who is, the Bible says, full of grace and truth. So when you receive Jesus, you receive grace. Amen. When you receive Jesus, you receive truth. Praise the Lord. Now, this is where I love this. Let's go to verse 16. Um, and let's read 16 and 17. He says, and of his fullness. Because remember, the Bible says that, that the word became flesh and it, 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 it dwelt among us. Talking about Jesus, the son of God, the only begotten. And of his fullness have all we received and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So this law that kept showing me my sins, this law that kept you becoming more and more a breaker of sin, the more knowledgeable you became of wrong and right, the more wrong you became in your own strength, the more wrong you did in your own strength, the more you tried to please God religiously, okay, through your own works and ways, that you kept coming up short. But the Bible says there is a grace and a truth that comes only through Jesus Christ. Let's look at this in the Amplified. Verse number 16 and verse number 17. So how do you receive grace? I got to stay connected to Jesus. Even in this virtual space, you've got to stay connected to Jesus. There has to be a respect that you give to worship. There has to be a respect that you give to the hearing and the receiving of the word of God. If you wouldn't do it that way in the sanctuary, don't do it that way outside of the sanctuary. The same reverence that you give to God should be the same reverence that you give even though you're in a virtual space. Why? Because I know the importance of staying connected to Jesus. Hallelujah. I cannot get disconnected from Jesus. When I get disconnected from Jesus, I get disconnected from grace. Watch this. For out of his fullness, abundance, we have all received and all had a share, and we have all been supplied with one grace after another. And spiritual blessing, there it is again, 
that, that which empowers me inwardly, that which gives me authority where I didn't have it, okay, upon spiritual blessing. And even, no, he separates favor upon favor and gift upon gift. So he defines grace, again, as a spiritual blessing. That's where he empowers me to give me authority in areas I did not. And then he gives us grace as it relates to favor. But he says it comes heaped upon heap. For while the law was given through Moses, grace, unearned, undeserved favor, and spiritual blessing, and truth came through Jesus Christ. So how do I receive grace? Through Jesus Christ. That's how grace came then. That's how grace comes now, through Jesus Christ. And every time you grow closer in your relationship with Jesus, amen, not your profession, not what you do, but with Jesus, the more you're able to receive of grace. Now, we said there's a grace that comes upon you that enables you to live superior to and not subject to sin. Superior to and not subject to sin. So we're looking at grace, sin versus grace. The reason why sin loses is because grace gives us superiority. It gives us authority. It enables us with strength, amen, to say no to, praise the Lord, and to stand in authority over instead of being under the authority of sin. Let's go to James chapter 4, verse number 6. This is a powerful scripture, Amplified. James chapter 4, verse number 6. The Bible says this, praise the Lord, but he gives us more and more grace through the power of the Holy Spirit. Why does he give us more grace? Why, why does he give us more grace? We, the Bible says he gives us more and more grace through the Holy Spirit. Watch this. To defy sin and live an obedient life that reflects both our faith and our gratitude for salvation. Let me stop there. So the Bible says that when God gives us grace, this grace is coming so that we can have the strength, the power, the authority to defy sin. Write down the word defy. Glory to God. Because that's a powerful statement there. To defy sin and live an obedient life. To defy sin and live an obedient life. So he gives us to defy sin. Now, now there are synonyms to defy. One of those synonyms is the word defeat. So there are times when grace will come upon you so you can defeat that particular sin practice. That's called deliverance, where you defeated that thing. That thing is no longer a challenge for you. He graces us to defy sin, which is sometimes, which, which can mean the word defeat. Not only that, but the word defy can also mean the word escape. The Bible says there's no temptation given to man whereby God has not already provided unto us a way of escape. Sometimes grace comes upon you to get you out of that situation. Praise the Lord. He'll grace you with an exit. He'll grace you with an opportunity to escape. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Defy sin. So we defy sin by defeating it. We defy sin by escaping from it. We defy sin also means to elude it, to elude it. Yeah, to elude it. Now, I love this because um, defeat, whenever sin is defeated, this is worth note taking, that's called deliverance. Whenever you get truly delivered from something, hey, glory to God, grace will allow you to stand in victory over it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, delivered, delivered, delivered from it, delivered from it, delivered from it, okay? That's how we defeat sin, by being delivered. Yes. Now, defeat speaks to deliverance. Watch this, where elude speaks to management. 
So I'm able to elude that. I'm able to manage me. Watch this. I'm able to manage me to elude that. I'm able to manage, you know, your relation with that particular thing. You're able to elude it. Watch this. You, you stay away from it, uh-huh, when you are eluding it, all right? You stay on top of it when you've defeated it. Now, that's powerful because there are some things that you have to stay away from, all right, because you are not necessarily delivered from it. Mm. Oh, God, this is real. Help me, Pastor. In other words, there are certain temptations to sin intentionally and continually that you mitigate by either distance, staying away from, watch this, or discretion. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can do that, but I can't do that too much. Or I can't do that too long. All right? Why? Because some matters are not matters of deliverance. They are matters of management. And God will grace you, praise the Lord, to live delivered from what he's freed you from. But then there are other times where God will grace you to manage. Because everything is not a demon. Some things are in discipline. And God will give grace to you when you cry out for his grace through Jesus. Jesus will give you the grace, praise the Lord, to manage that. Yeah, some things are matters of management. For example, you know, you have to manage your attraction so that it doesn't become lust. All lust is, is mismanaged attraction. Bishop Eddie Long, the late Bishop Eddie Long, who I still, you know, uh, value and respect the great things that God was, a, what God did through him during his lifespan and ministry in spite of the other things, amen, that, 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 that were done or that was a, a, a assumed or, you know, alleged done. But I heard him preach a message one time at Manpower with Bishop Jakes as a young man on lust. And he, he said, you know, there's nothing wrong with looking. He said, don't look too long. Because see, when you look too long, watch this, that which was just an attraction has now become lust. Well, you can't pluck your eyes out. I want to get delivered from seeing. No, you can't get delivered from seeing. We're going to pluck your eyeballs out. No, you have to learn how to manage attraction because everything is not a matter of deliverance. Some things are matters of management. For example, you have to manage your eating intake. Why? Because if I don't manage my eating intake, I can fall into gluttony. So is eating a sin? No. Overly indulging in eating is. So is that a matter of deliverance or is that a matter of management? It's a matter of management. And God wants to give you grace tonight. Hallelujah. God wants you to renew your mind so you can release your faith for now what you understand. See, when you understand something, you believe it. When you believe it, you can receive it. So there's a grace that you can receive because you believe because now you understand, right? So now your prayer is, God, I thank you that through Jesus I receive increased grace. And this increased grace is not something to give me a license to live loosely. This increased grace comes upon me, praise the Lord, so I can defy sin and live an obedient life. Hallelujah. I want to live an obedient life. I believe that's your desire. You want to live an obedient life. Well, you need grace. Let's go to 2 Corinthians one more time. Chapter 12. We'll look at verse number 8 through 10, Message Bible. Amen. Glory to God. We're almost there. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll look at verse 8 through 10 in the Message Bible. The Bible says, because of the extravagance of those revelations... And so I wouldn't even get a big head. I was given the gift of a handicap to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. Satan's angel did his best to get me down. What he in fact did was push me to my knees. Go ahead, Paul. No danger then of walking around high and mighty. He said, I can't get too high in pride when I'm on my knees. At first, I didn't think of it as a gift and begged, God, remove it, God, remove it, God, remove it. Three times I did that, and then he told me, 
Grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into its own in your weakness. He said, once I heard that, I was glad to let it happen. Notice what he said now. Notice what he said. Continue. He said, I quit focusing on my handicap, my sin, and began appreciating the gift of grace. It was a case of Christ's strength moving in on my weakness. Now I take limitations in stride and with good cheer. These limitations that cut me down to size, abuse, accidents, oppositions, bad breaks, I just let Christ take over. Go ahead, Paul. And so the weaker I get, the stronger I become. And that's exactly how grace works. The weaker you seem like you're getting, the more stronger you become in grace. But you cannot receive what you don't believe. And you can't believe what you don't understand. So now you understand grace is not just favor. Grace is what God uses to kick in in the areas of your weakness. So that you don't continue to fall subject to sin, sin's power, and sin's control. Grace. He said whenever there's a competition, grace going to win every time, even in your life. So the next time that thing comes about, the next time opportunities and temptations come, grace is going to kick in. And grace will give you the strength. Grace will give you the authority. Now you got a desire. Notice now it gets back. I'm closing. It gets back to your desire to be what God has called you to be. Righteous. So there's some things you could do. There's some things that you love to do. There's some things that, oh, will give you a sure good time. But because you want to be righteous, you're going to call on grace. And in that moment, because your desire to be righteous exceeds your desire to be pleased, grace will strengthen you in your time of weakness. I love that because the verse says, I prayed three times. And God did not take it away. Why? Because God said this is not a matter of deliverance. This is a matter of management. I'm not going to take it away. I'm going to give you the grace to manage this. And likewise with us tonight, the Father gives us grace to manage some things. I'm praying for you because I feel you in my spirit. Some of you say I got stuff all over the place. Man, it just seems like I just can't pull my life together. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed of myself. The thoughts I have, the things that I do, I'm so embarrassed. And shame and condemnation, even sins, even, even the little sins throughout your day. And you say, you know, I feel bad about that because I know better. And I know God wants better for me. And I know God has better for me. And you just feel as though, hey, I, 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 I can't, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just at my wit's end. I don't know what to do. I feel like this church thing, this Christian thing, this righteousness thing is beyond my achieving. I want to remind you what Paul said one more time in 2 Corinthians 12 and 10, Message Bible, the latter part. Praise the Lord. He said, listen. Again, he quit focusing on his handicap. And he said, look, I just, he said, when it comes to all of the, the things that I had to go through, he said, I started to appreciate the gift. And it was a case of Christ really strengthening me by moving in on my weaknesses. He said, so now I take this stuff in stride with good cheer. He said, the opposition, the bad breaks. Look what he says, I just let Christ take over. And I'm praying for somebody that's listening to me now that you just let Christ take over. You've done all you can do in your own strength and you keep coming up short like so many of us have. So now is the time to cry out for grace. The Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself and cry out for grace. We're talking about right standing and righteousness. A righteous man asks God for help. Sometimes up to 200 times a day. When was the last time you asked God for help? Humble yourself. When you humble yourself and ask for help, he'll grace you. 
And that sin practice that has dominated your life privately, grace will begin to cause you to dominate it now. Why? Because God is doing something in you. And I sense it in the spirit. God is doing something in your life. He's ironing out some wrinkles. He's polishing some areas. He's getting you ready for that in which you could not even prepare yourself for. You got to trust him. And instead of focusing on your handicap, start to focus on grace. Increase those righteous declarations because God is doing something in your life and he needs your cooperation. He needs you to believe that you can be righteous through his grace. God bless these hearers, cause their lives to never be the same again after having heard this word of faith. Be blessed. My, oh my, what a tremendous word. We thank God for Bishop-elect Hedgeman for being able to hear from heaven and be able to disseminate such a powerful word to his people and to all the people of God. We thank you so much for joining us on tonight. Listen, we ask now that you please like, please comment, please share. Let your friends know that there is a voice that is hearing from heaven. There is a watchman on the wall and God is speaking directly through him for his people. Listen, if you're unsaved, we ask now that you please pray with us. Allow us to lead you into the family of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These days are not guaranteed to any of us. So we want to take this time out now to pray a special prayer for you so that you can now join yourself in the family of those who are saved by our Lord Jesus Christ. So please bow with us now. We ask that you please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, we ask that you please come into our lives. God, we thank you now that we understand that we are sinners. Yes, God, we are separated from you because of our sin. We ask now that you please come into our heart. Change our lives, God. Make us who you have created us to be so that we can be a part of your family. We decree now that Christ Jesus is our Lord and our Savior and that he died on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We know that if you have prayed that prayer, God is now a part of your life and Jesus is now the Lord and Savior of everything that connects you. So we pray now that you please write us, email us, text us, let us know that this word is impacting your lives for the better so that we can all join in together and celebrate the victories God is doing through you, to you, and for you. We thank you so much for joining us on tonight. We will leave you with this that God is still in control no matter what man thinks, says, or believes. We give God the glory for everything. God bless you. Good night.